Hi everyone, my name is Pastor Ian and I want to welcome our Glenbrook Church family and also others who are uh, joining us for this evening's devotion. And I also want to thank uh, Deborah Rolls who has um, uh, filled in for me over the past two evenings um, and has given me a bit of a rest. So thank you, uh, Deborah. I appreciate that. Over the next uh, week, I'm going to try my best to unpack uh, this question. Why is the resurrection of Jesus good news? Why is it good news uh, for you, and why is it good news uh, for me? I have to agree with the scholar by the name of N.T. Wright, who said in his book, uh, Simply Good News, he writes, Without Easter, that is, without Jesus being raised from the dead into a new bodily life, nobody would ever have imagined that God's saving plan had been fulfilled. In other words, without the resurrection, Jesus' public ministry, including his crucifixion, would have been highlighted as historically extraordinary and, yes, significant, but in the end, no different than any other leader or teacher or even religious martyr. Jesus would perhaps be noted and quoted as a religious figure, as a prophet, as a wise teacher, perhaps mentioned in the same company as Moses, as Buddha, as, as Mohammed, as Confucius, or even in the company of more modern activists and thinkers who have in influenced our thinking even today, such as Gandhi or Einstein or even Martin Luther King Jr. Christianity might be considered by many as good advice, meaning this, well, here is how Jesus taught us to live our lives, which is true, but is Christianity good advice or good news? Now, it seems to me Christianity has some good advice on how uh, to be a good and moral person, how to love your neighbor, how to live a good and purposeful life. But quite frankly, if you are a student of other religions or faiths, or worldviews or philosophies, Christianity is not alone in this. And depending on who you ask, Christianity might not necessarily be the best advice that we could follow. Horrific things have been done and perpetrated in the name of our Lord Jesus. The thing about Christianity is, and what makes it extraordinary and even exclusive, is that its founder died and rose again in the same body, spent some days after his resurrection with his disciples and followers, and then ascended into the Father and is alive forevermore. For the early followers of Jesus, this resurrection was simply not about good advice. It was good news. That is, there was a new physical human being, once who, one who was dead, but now is very much alive. And can I say, this completely blew their minds. Now, there will be some who would argue, well, maybe they were simply deluded or in denial or maybe completely misled. But I would suggest to you that they had experienced the evidence of something extraordinary. Some might question, well, Pastor Ian, the Bible doesn't seem to be consistent about the details of the actual resurrection. Well, I know that the gospel accounts seem to contradict each other at points. I realize that the Roman soldiers never wrote up a report. I know that medical science would question this. I know that none of us really can be, none of this can really, really be proved, regardless of how many documentaries uh, we see at this time of the year for or against uh, the resurrection of Jesus. The one thing that seems to be consistent in all of this is that the early followers of this man, Jesus, agree on one basic and central testimony. The resurrection is good news because God raised Jesus from the dead. God's saving plan had been vindicated and fulfilled. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 5 said this, For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scripture, and that he was buried, 
and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters. Later on, Paul says that Christ appeared to him, quote, as one untimely born and the least of all of the apostles, unquote. Jesus Christ died. He was dead and buried. On the third day, he was raised from the dead, and he appeared to his disciples. This is the message that gradually converted many in the first century world and still is creating new Christians around the world today. It is not primarily a collection of religious or philosophical principles. It is not primarily spiritual teaching. It is not necessarily good advice. It is good news. Something happened with implications for you and for me, which is going to be covered in some later devotions, so stay tuned. But for day, today, my point is that the resurrection of Jesus is good news, gospel. It is an announcement about events that happened and were described and believed, and maybe the greatest evidence of all was the fact that an unlikely group of disciples, men and women, were transformed into those who participated and carried this good news, this gospel, to the world in which they lived. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Were they deluded? Were they living in denial? Were they misled? Or were they faithful witnesses of something extraordinary? something that happened outside of Jerusalem. It's a choice that we need to think about and contemplate and decide on. Fleming Rutledge, in her book, The Undoing of Death, wrote these words, The resurrection is not so because we want it to be so, because we imagine it to be so, because we need it to be so. It is so against all human possibility, against all human expectation, against all human imagining. It is so by the miraculous intervention of a God who has not abandoned us to the grave. This is good news. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. I don't know what better good news we could have this evening or tomorrow, in the weeks or even in the years to come. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our good and gracious God, we thank you that you have given to us this good news. Indeed, there are many things that we can learn and know and follow from what we know of our Christian faith. God, we thank you for the good news that something happened in that empty tomb, that in fact our Lord and Savior Jesus rose again from the dead and lives and is interceding on our behalf before your throne. And so, God, as we go into this evening, we ask and pray that you would remind us of this great fact. We thank you that you have called us to participate, indeed, in your life, for we have been made alive in you. In the name of Christ, we pray, and all God's people said, Amen.